everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Just when I thought the Wheel of Time news might slow down just a little bit so I could get some of my other videos I've got planned out to you all, more information keeps dropping and this time it's worth taking a look at. It's going to give us some big clues in terms of the direction of the show, the length of the first season, and some possible changes to the plot. Before getting too deep into the video, I wanted to first take a second and highlight a couple newer Wheel of Time YouTubers that are out there making videos for you all to check out. I love that as the show gets closer, there are more and more Wheel of Time content creators and the community is growing a lot. Take a quick moment, pause this video and subscribe to their channels and go watch all their videos. Getting started on YouTube can be tough and your support will help them continue to grow and make more and more Wheel of Time content. First, check out Reading the Pattern. Rebecca is a fellow Wheel of Time nerd, and I'm a big fan of her videos. She has a healthy mix of videos about the upcoming show, and she's in the middle of a reread series of The Eye of the World that's really great for those of you that are doing a reread of the series right now. Wheel of Time Theory is another channel I watch fairly regularly. He's very good at keeping up to date on the latest news to be announced or leaked about the upcoming show, and he packs a lot of information into his videos. What Up, also known as the Canadian Nablus, sorry, is another fairly new Wheel of Time YouTuber. He has a mix of videos about the book series and news and insight into the upcoming TV show. Check him out. And lastly, if you want something a bit different and a lot of fun, check out The Dusty Wheel. The channel is run by Matt Hatch, who many of you might know as the innkeeper from Theoryland.com. Matt is a great host and they run a call-in style show where you can interact during the live broadcast. I've been a guest on the show and I call in frequently. You should absolutely check them out. You can find links to all of those channels in the description below. So again, pause for a minute, go check those channels out, hit subscribe, come back and finish the video. Now, if any of you are thinking about starting your own YouTube channel, I would encourage you to try it. The more discussion about the books and the show going on right now, the better, in my opinion. If you aren't quite sure how to do it, a suggestion that I might make is to check out some of the courses on Skillshare.com, one of the sponsors of the channel, they're gonna give you two months of the service for free and you can learn courses geared towards teaching you how to do whatever you wanna know, not just how to run a YouTube channel, but it will be able to teach you to do that. You can check out the service and support the channel at the same time. It really helps us out, guys. All you gotta do is click that link in the description below and get two months free of the service. And so without further ado, let's get into the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers all the way through the great hunt as well as spoilers for the first season of the Wheel of Time TV show. If you don't want anything at all spoiled, watch this video at your own risk as there will be some plot points that we will discuss in the video. So folks, I literally had another video planned about some of the questions that we didn't have answered yet and some of the stuff that they might announce in future Wheel of Time Wednesdays. And I was gonna release that today, but then this news dropped over the weekend, and so I had to change some of my video from just because of this news. And so you're gonna have to see the edited version of that video in a few days. This news, of course, is what I'm gonna hit on today. There are two separate sources and two big pieces of information that we're gonna hit on today. Let's start by hitting on the first piece, which seems kind of small, but there's a very cool detail buried into this news release. So Valyrian Steel, the company that manufactures replica swords, weapons, and other paraphernalia for the Song of Ice and Fire series, and for Game of Thrones, has been granted exclusive rights to make replica weapons for the Wheel of Time TV show. This means that they'll be making Heron Mark swords, Terangrial like Matt's medallion, Aes Sedai rings, and Ashaman pins. For those of you that are collectors, this is exciting news as you'll be able to get your very own weapons to hang up, or used to fight Trollocs if the Dark One ever breaks free in our time. This was announced in a quick blurb on their website that was discovered by Narg the Trolloc. While I do think it's cool that there's a place to buy weaponry, the juicier piece of news was buried in that blurb. The blurb announces the show is having a release date of 2020. Previously, much of what we had seen had indicated that it might be 2021 before we saw the show. If this is true, which it seems likely as merchandise manufacturers often accidentally leak information about upcoming movies and TV shows, because they do have that information, then we're due to see the Wheel of Time on television this coming year. Uh, I'm pretty damn pumped. I'm not going to have to wait a whole other year, maybe just a little bit shorter than a year. Now, there's a bit more news about the filming and release date of the show that will add to this part of the story, but we're going to save that for the very end of the video. Before that, let's hit on casting news that was also released in the past few days. While these casting announcements are not directly from Amazon or the production team, they are casting announcements that are tied to each of these actors' resumes or CVs and are displayed publicly as a credit to them on their talent agency websites. The majority of these announcements are fairly small, but their significance is large. 
So let's start with what I believe to be the smallest of the announcements. Redanian Intelligence, a fantasy news website that's kind of geared around The Witcher, discovered all these people, so credit to them. But we'll kick it off here with Pierce Quigley being cast as Master Hightower, the ferryman from Terran Ferry, that takes the party across the Terran River as they flee from the two rivers. We've learned through a leak in the metadata of a photo posted by Brandon Sanderson a few weeks back that Hightower will die after Moraine sinks the ferry, and he kind of chases it into the river. So this character will not be a major character in the story. He's likely only appearing in episode two and possibly episode one. Pierce Quigley's a relatively experienced television actor, but since he's playing a small character in this adaptation, I won't go too much into depth on his past works as I don't believe he's going to get a whole lot of screen time. It does feel as though that they're kind of rounding out the smaller roles in the cast though, which is kind of exciting to me. The second actor that has been linked to the Wheel of Time is actually a stunt actor named Roman Dvorak. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, he will be playing a Trolloc in the show. Now there's quite a bit of ambiguity about this announcement and it could mean a bunch of different things. My first thought when they bring in a stunt actor to play a Trolloc means that he will be kind of the human model for some of the CGI that will be added to create Trollocs on the screen. You could see this with actors in movies like The Avengers, uh, for instance. Uh, some Trollocs don't have large speaking parts, so it's very possible that they're just bringing in him to do modeling for movement in Trollocs in the series. And he could actually model all of the Trollocs if they create them with CGI. Now, if that was the case, they would be making Trollocs as CGI. And, and, and if that CGI is done really well, then I'll be okay with it. But I typically prefer detailed practical effects that are kind of just touched up by CGI. So I'm kind of hoping that's not true or they're bringing in like really high-tech CGI for it. The other possibility here is that he's just going to be an extra and be one of the Trollocs uh, up close and that there are a whole lot of other people like him and that he's just the only one that we had an announcement for in his CV. Because keep in mind... This was not announced by Amazon. This was just discovered on his CV on a talent website under his name. So he could be playing a practically generated Trolloc with makeup and prosthetics. I really think that either of these is possible. We just don't have enough information at this point to make a better uh, pick on it. I'm hoping for practical effects. The third casting announcement is for two child actresses who are sisters in real life that would be playing sisters in the show. Lilibet and Litiana Butinseva hopefully I said that correct, will be playing Eldrin and Bodwin Cawthon, respectively. They join actor Christopher Scarif and actress Juliet Howland in rounding out the Cawthon family as the two girls will be playing Matt's sisters and Christopher and Juliet are playing his parents. Now, these should be minor roles in the first season of the show, but Bodwin specifically gets an expanded role later in the series. So by choosing young child actresses, they have the option of allowing them to grow into the part, or they can find a more adult actress down the road when Bodwin comes back into the story again. The last actor discovered here is probably the most profound in regards to the size of his role and to the impact and possible changes to the story it might bring. Abdul Salas, one of the stars of the movie Love Actually and the famous British TV show Casualty, has been tapped according to his CV to play Eamon Valda, the Lord Commander of the Children of Light. Abdul is an accomplished actor, but I don't think I've ever seen him play a part like the hate-filled character of Eamon Valda. And I would say my initial reaction to this is he just kind of looks too happy for it. He's an attractive guy, and every clip and interview that I can find of him has him always smiling, and that smile's kind of infectious. Uh, that being said, though, villains can look pretty and smile too. In fact, that could be an advantage in making us really dislike a, vi a villain. Think uh, Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter. Valda isn't a major role, and while he doesn't instantly jump out to me as Valda, I'm not too worried about this because, again, it is a smaller role, and we really don't know how he's going to be used or how the White Cloaks are going to be used. What's odd about this announcement is actually the fact that Valda was announced at all. In the books, he's mentioned earlier in the story, but he doesn't make an appearance until book six. So the fact that he's been announced as part of the first season of the show, and then you combine that with the fact that you see him sitting there at the table read video that Amazon released, and that's just for the first two episodes, that puts Eamon Valda appearing in the story within the first two episodes of the show. So this could mean a few things. One, Valda could simply be assuming the role of the main white cloak bad guy that we're going to run into a bunch of different times. This would be a simplification of the story. Uh, which is something that very well could happen. The crew runs into the White Cloaks in Berlon in the books, and this is the first time that we see Dane Bornholm. Maybe that rather than seeing Dane here, we're going to be introduced to Valda as that villain, so it's just fewer characters we've got to follow. I could see that very well happening. Another possibility is that the White Cloaks and their movements around the world are a plot point that we will follow throughout the series, 
and we will see Valda on it early on in a separate plot line that doesn't intersect with our main crew. I think the first of these is the most likely, but anything is possible when we have this little information. The last piece of information I'm going to hit on here is something I've been waiting to get some information on for quite a while, and that is the number of episodes in the first season. Again, this is not confirmed, but given the source being a production agency, I think it's likely to be true. According to the article, the first season of production of The Wheel of Time will wrap on May 20th of 2020. This means that they have roughly six months of filming left, which actually sounds like a lot of filming, if you ask me. It was also revealed that the first season will consist of eight episodes. It is restated here that we should expect a late 2020 release of the first season, so we talked about that earlier. So, wow. Uh, we finally have an idea on the episode count and what that's going to mean for the plot of the first season. Now, I'm going to be making a video going into my predictions for the plot of the first season based on the number of episodes, so I won't go too deep into this right now, but here are my initial thoughts. First of all, I wish we were getting 10 episodes in the first season but I'm not alarmed or concerned about eight. Most Amazon shows get between eight and 12 episodes, and so while this is on the lower end, this is also a higher production cost show, so it makes sense that they would start at eight. I've seen some saying that this means Amazon is worried about the show, and I actually don't think that's accurate at all. Again, money is not the issue here with Amazon making shows. This is likely a choice by Rafe and the writing team, rather than Amazon. Amazon bought the rights to this, they spent a lot of money on it, so they're gonna throw money at it, for at least for the first season. If it meant 10 episodes or 12 episodes, they're not gonna hesitate at that. That's not that much more money. If Rafe had said they needed 12, I'm fairly certain they would have gotten it. I think that it's more likely that Rafe believes that eight episodes really tells the story that he wants to tell in the first season. And so he can get that all wrapped up into eight episodes. The second thing that this tells me is that we are not likely to see much of book two in the first season, despite what we thought previously. With eight episodes, I think we're going to see mainly the plot elements of the Eye of the World, along with some of the expanded stories for Loghain and the White Cloaks and whatever else they want to add into this part of the story. I don't think they're going to try to cram two books into eight episodes, as that would basically be impossible. Now, I'm very curious what all of you think about this news. Please let me know in the comments below and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to get updates when I release more Wheel of Time content. Check out the Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here on the channel. Guys, I'm going to have a sneak peek of the website for you in my next video, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free crying. Tinker, oh dear, Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?